welcome listeners to, to Common Kingdom, Kingdom Community Radio. I'm your host, uh, I'm your super co-host, Clyde Jimsdale. Thank you, Clyde. And I'm Wolf Lewister, but you already knew that. So, uh, the news for today. King Boone the King has commissioned a new branch of the constabulary, specifically an astrological constabulary. They're a- currently, uh... Astrological? Yes, they, um... So, uh, the way it works, so far as I can tell, is uh, certain people are more likely to commit certain crimes based on their astrological signs, etc., etc. And this branch of the constabulary has been commissioned to prevent those crimes from happening before the fact by arresting the people who are most likely to commit them. Yeah, but as- astrological con- const... That's too many letters. Why don't, why don't they go with something simple, something catchier, like Star Force? They might do that later, however, they were just commissioned this morning, so I don't think they've thought that much on it. We'll have to talk to them about that. In any case, uh, this sort of commission has proven very effective in the Amaranthian Empire to the south, so uh, King Boone the King wanted something like that here. Oh, so uh, so now we're all about the Amaranthian Empire? They are the uh, leading trade nation in these parts, and oh. the major source of wealth on this entire coastline. Okay. What are the astrological signs of the majority of the kingdom? It's actually quite peculiar. Almost the entire population is Pisces and Aquarius. I'm not exactly sure why. I don't understand astrology. But I'm told we have some very keen experts in the constabulary. Which, uh, if our listeners want to bring any complaints to the constabulary, they're currently setting up office in one of the smaller rooms above the tavern in town. How active have they been since they've been commissioned? From what I've heard, they've already made 17 arrests. 17? Yes, um... They've actually filled up the town jail. They're going to need to start putting people in King Boone's dungeon if they keep up at this rate. King Boone has a dungeon? He's a king. He has a castle. Of course he has a dungeon. Oh. How comfy is the dungeon? Uh, uh, let me just check my notes. Uh, it says here, it's dank. Uh, another peculiar thing, my notes say... Um, according to the notes that I clearly have here and totally did not just take from my host, uh, 10 of the 17 arrests so far have been uh, Scorpios, whereas the other 7 are various Tauros and Cancers. Mm, yes, my notes did say that, Clyde. Thank you. And for those of you worried about our dwarf in the sky, Ergen Jurgensen, after his crash with a rogue teleporting wizard, fear not! A brief searching party had uh, located our dwarven friend. It appears that during the crash, a potion of uh, stone skin, if I'm reading this correctly? That is what it says, Clyde. A potion of stone skin managed to splash upon the dwarf, protecting him from the ensuing blast of the crash. A team of medics and clerics had been working around the clock and managed to reverse the effects of the potion within... Under 24 hours. I believe what they did was they just chipped the stone off of him. And once they got all that off, he was able to move as normal. With his restored state, Ergen has decided to head back to the shop and make sure that the Ornithopter is back in ready condition. However, he has been mandated to stay away from the skies as the recovery of his skin is still underway. Yes, I believe it makes him unusually heavy for a while afterwards. So, um, the Ornithopter, even if it were not in several small pieces, would not be able to hold him up. Later in the show, we will be throwing to our, am I reading this right, Vol? Our garden gnome? Uh, yep. He's the one who stands in for Ergen Jurgensen when he invariably crashes into the ground. So this happens frequently? Not infrequently. Alright, we will be throwing to our gnome in the skies, German Omnisbox, for the traffic for today. But now we are going to be hearing from our A&E reporter, Thaddeus, followed immediately, apparently, by our sports announcer, Og. Yes, they are, in fact, two heads of the same two-headed troll. Thaddeus, your side's the left side. Move the left foot. Open door! That's my hand you're trying to use. Great googly Ah! googly, what is that? In room. Okay, duck. Remember to duck. Oh! I tell you to duck every time. Why do uh, I bother? That, that's our um, that's our A and E reporter and our sports reporter, uh, Og and Thaddeus. Well, there are two heads and one body. Yes, they're a troll. It's not uncommon. Which one is Thaddeus and which one is Og? Honestly, I couldn't tell you. 
You'll know when they start speaking. So, Thaddeus, our A&E segment. That you are our A&E segment reporter, yes? Yes! Thaddeus, make the crafts! That's very nice, Thaddeus. Uh, for our audio listeners, which is everybody, could you describe the art that you are currently holding very close to my face? <laughs> it's a sculpture! I make it from nails! He's very good with his hand. Uh, th- thank you, Th- Thaddeus. Once again, for our audio listeners, which again, is everybody, could you explain what kind of nails you have made this sculpture out of? I make from beast nails. They have very nice clean nails. They ha- preserve the Sagawin. Uh, to help our listeners along, this is a very red statue for reasons unknown. Thank you, Thaddeus. Uh, is uh, oh th- no, the re- reasons are very known. Those are the claws of several beasts fresh after they mauled their victims. Thank you, Og? Yes, Og. Okay, um, yes, it is a very, um, poignant Poignant art piece. It's more pointy than poignant. Yes, it's very much a commentary on, um, uh, life and death. Yes, yes. Um, Og, do you have any sports news for us? Why, yes, I do. Sports are going wonderfully as tryouts for the next season of war are going simply marvelously. You would not believe the turnout. Everybody, it seems, wants to be a knight this season. Their nails were not pretty. Their nails were mostly coated in gore and mud, yes. So, as it is known, there is some turnover with the local war team. I'll make turnovers tomorrow! Yes, and they'll be lovely, I'm sure. But every season, we have to have a recruiting drive to go and get new knights for our war season. This year, I am particularly interested in Sir Thursday Omnibottom and Wednesday Crackerfax. They are both excellent swordsmen, though neither one is particularly sure what to do with a shield. Thursday Omnibottom has repeatedly tried to surf the shield, even though the battlefield is mostly flat. Um, when can we see these two performing? Excellent question. Our war season opener is against the Iron Hills. I expected myself to have a war team name for them by then, but I didn't. Our opening season war game is against the Iron Hills Direwolves. Oh, and they always produce spectacular casualty rates, so I'm expecting it to be a wonderful time. Direwolves have nice nails! Yes, the Iron Hill Direwolves have very nice nails. They all sharpen their fingers. I don't know how they do that. Mm, yes, I'm sure if we did know, that would be a great boon to our success rate in the war games. Um, to, our, to our listeners, what days will these opening season be presented? Well, our opening game is actually this Friday. So Thursday and Wednesday are expected to really show themselves on the field this Friday. And <laughs> bring home the bacon in the form of the heads of several of our enemies. <laughs> are you familiar with the game of war? Sir. Um, I have done many reports on war, actually. I've done many field reports on the race war of 2011. That's actually not what we're talking about. This is a war, not a race. They run at each other instead of collectively towards a finish line and swing their swords quite a bit. You get the most points if you knock the most of the other team down before they knock you down. Oh, so it's like football. Yes, essentially yes. If football involves running clad in armor, headlong into another team, swinging violent implements, and making a great many people very injured. Oh, so it's like <laughs> Cut that. Cut that. <laughs> Future Twan, I leave it to you whether you cut that or not. Future Twan, cut that. <laughs> and if that's all for today for sports... Yes! Go Knights! Go Knights. Duck to door again! Yes, now remember to duck. I can... Oh! Ah. Left, right, my left, left, your right. Let me use the feet for now. Well, that was certainly interesting. Yeah, that it was, Clyde. We do have a wonderful team here at the station. 
Well, folks, it looks like it's now time to get our weather from our weather priest, Jimbo the Orc. Ah, thank you, Clyde. Uh, now the weather for this week will be as follows. Today, Monday, you can expect sun all day with some slight showers in the afternoon. Tomorrow on Tuesday, we have a 50% chance of some slight rain during the morning. And then again at night. On Wednesday, local weather god Al Rokia has answered your prayers and given me a 100% guarantee of torrential rain all through the day, except for an hour around noon, so that your crops will be watered. Thursday, that rain will probably peter off with a 70% chance of slight showers through the morning again, and then on Friday, I put a special word to Al Rokia for monodirectional hail, which will certainly not in any way preferentially affect the war games which are happening that afternoon. Go Knights! <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Jimbo. Uh, you heard it right here. For those of you on Wednesday, be sure to skip out on the boating trips and pay close attention to your crops. All right, folks, it looks like it's time for our, for our field. field report from Scott the Scott. It's, uh, it's pronounced the Scout. Thank you. Thank you, Clyde. Well, S Scott the Scout. Thanks. The Scout. There's no space in his last name. That's just how names are, man. Oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, Scott, what have you got for us today? Well, I am reporting to you from the bat field out on the edge of town. It ah. is a lovely field. I think it'll just be perfect for your new tower. It is, uh, very flat and very open. New tower? Uh, yeah, the, the, the new radio tower. Uh, Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. The current so, one's losing floors. Lo losing? Best not ask questions. Station management doesn't like that sort of thing. I see them staring into my soul as we currently speak. I will divert to a different topic. So, anything else to report on the fields? Yes, this field, Bat Field, is a lovely field, as described by this sign right here in great big letters with a little bit of a scratch mark there. It might, I might uh, not have the name quite Scott, right, but that's fine. Scott, Scott, do you have any news for us? Yes, yes. The news is this field is exceptionally flat, the ground is well-packed and thoroughly trampled, and you will notice it has a lovely view of the town. Very close and local. You'll have no trouble getting a radio signal. Hold hold on, hold on, Scott. We're getting a call right now. <laughs> he, is he just reporting on a field? Yes, he is. That's what we hired him for, to find fields for new construction. He's, he's the field reporter. Okay, very well. All right, Scott, so how, on a scale from 1 to 10, with 1 being the lowest and 10 being the absolute superbest, how would you rate this field? Well, I'd say this field's about a 7. It's very well locally uh, represented. You can walk to the tower currently. It would be simply easy to get to. This field is, uh, as I said, exceptionally flat. Like, I have not seen a field this flat in my life. It's Thoroughly flat, but uh, the grass is a little trampled in some spots, and you got some a couple little furrows here and there. Oh, and it seems like there's already a welcoming party gathering up. Well, if it looked like the local team, the knights are out here to welcome us. Um, hold on a second. Scott, did you say that that bat field sign had some scratches in it? Yeah, but, but uh, I'm, I'm sure this is called bat field. The sign's nice and well prominent. Uh, looks like the knights are setting up for a practice charge. This will be nice to see. Uh, Vol? I... Hmm. I'm not sure what's happening. <laughs> well, Scott, if you have the time, I would say you would want to, as the locals say, hot-foot it out of there. And, uh, get going to the next field so that we may have a, uh, better venue to report on. Uh, well, what, what, you, you think there's gonna be a problem with this one? What, what's wrong with that field? Well, it's, it's let, let's... always good to have some selection, Scott. Yes, uh, we've... we've... You said it was a confident seven. Let's see if we can't find an eight, and we will get back to you, uh... Sure. Oh my, it looks like the knights are ready for their practice charge. I can't wait. I love seeing these things up close. <laughs> oh boy. I do hope he's all right. And now it's time for traffic with our gnome in the sky, Gemin Omnisbox, filling in for Ergen Jurgensen. 
Thank you, Master Bo. This is Jim Omnis Fox. I am the station's garden gnome, typically, but I am subbing in for our fellow Ergen Jergens. So, as I can see from traffic, as I have experienced firsthand, traffic to the hospital seems to be backed up both ways, as the usual blood drive is going on today. I had to stop and help a few folks along the way, but traffic seems to be clearing up now. Could you, uh, tell us uh, what sort of help did you provide? Oh, well, there was a woman that was inside of her eighth trimester, and I helped her deliver the baby. Eighth trimester. Okay, uh... uh <laughs> easy there, Jimmy. Easy there. Uh, alright. Uh, could you tell us about uh, the traffic in other parts of town? There was an increased amount of highwaymen on Highway 15. I've since dispatched them with a few well-placed bags of manure. Uh, that's certainly very, um, ingenious of you. There was also a wizard blockading the main road into the kingdom. He had refused to let go of his, uh, Jimny, Jimny, not now. He refused to let go of his suspiciously large magical steed. He decided to ride a sort of lion with a human head into the kingdom, and I had convinced him that a chimera was a much better steed, so he transformed the steed immediately and took it to the air. Uh, all right. I hope that doesn't come to bite us in the butt later. Thank you very much, uh, Gemin. I appreciate you filling in for Ergen after his recent tragedy. Ah! Jimny, not now. What is that cawing in the background? What What is this Jimny that you keep referring to? Ah, well, that is the eagle that I have had to requisite for a, a nice flight, Jimny. I stumbled upon him as I was leaving the station, and he has since offered to give me the local ride as long as I give him the occasional shout-out. Back to you, Masters. All right, so now for our last bit of the day, uh, we now go to Stan Themen? Stan the Man. Stan the Man. Live on location. I am actually legally obligated to inform you that I am undead on location. Undead? Uh, hang on a second, Stan. Vol, did we hire a zombie? Uh, um, no. Technically, I'm a ghoul. Don't, don't call him a zombie. He's a ghoul. He's a ghoul, okay? Zombies are brainless mumblers. We don't <laughs> use a Z word here. Very well. Um, alright. Stan, what do you have for us today? I'm at the site of a recent drive-by beheading. The blood stains the cobblestones. The horror fills the eyes of the onlooking public as the body is dragged away by the constables. Has the new, um, astrological constabulary had anything to do with this? Yes, they expect this is actually a serial drive-by beheader riding his horse wildly around town, removing the heads of nearby pedestrians. That certainly does sound gruesome, Stan. Well, what do you expect from a Scorpio? Ah, so they have confirmed that this is indeed a Scorpio. What else would a serial killer be? Uh, very, uh, strong assertions there. Stan, can you tell us anything about the victim that was ruthlessly beheaded? Yes. Ben the Burglar was a well-loved member of our community. He was well known for dropping in on people at the least expected times and bringing the joy of greater living space to them. Oh, poor Ben. I remember him. He would visit me every Sunday afternoon. Technically, if they can get him to the hospital soon enough and they get his head reattached and his soul back, before half an hour, he will not qualify as undead. Just a medical miracle. Oh dear, it seems his head was crushed by the horseshoe. We're not getting Ben back. Oh. Shame. And Jemin just cleared the traffic ways to the hospital. What's this? A black steed charges down the way. A man in a scorpion hat. <laughs> oh dear, it seems I've lost my head. <sighs> Tell Teresa to get her sewing stuff out. Uh, sorry for that, Stan. Uh, we'll get right on that. The local star force is currently charging after the obviously Scorpio bandit. See, I told you, star force would catch on. And so it appears to have done, Clyde. Thank you for shoving your ego in this 
mournful moment. And thank you, Stan, for the latest live on location report. Technically, I'm undead on location. Thank you, Stan. Oh, is the pigeon okay? Little blood stained, but fine. Oh, phew. Oh, that was a present for my cousin. Um, do we have the funds for Teresa? Uh, I'm actually not sure how that works, but I believe Stan has arranged something with her. Okay, I will simply not ask any further questions, for I am worried as to the answers. That's uh, a good plan, Claude. For our next segment, uh, consumption of alligators. Is it ethical or unethical? Or is it just plain black magic? More on this when we come back. 